Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ming. I'm a data manager of Antarctic Biodiversity Portal, ACOD Antarctic node for Jupiter Opus. So, as to introduce my stand, thank you. <laughs> I'll be sharing about our insights of the Opus Data Quality Assessment and Enhancement Project team, which runs for a bit more than two years. So, I would, if you are interested to read our abstract, this is the QR code for our abstract. Um, so, kudos for the chat week organizer. <laughs> uh, Kat, Catherine introduced Ovis very well, so I don't have to go much into detail. It's just, as mentioned here, Ocean Biodiversity Information System, uh, which has the global biodiversity marine data. So, um, OBIS data is often used to produce statistics, such as this one, which shows the importance of UNESCO World Heritage Marine Sites in the importance of World Heritage Marine Sites in global biodiversity. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of this page, it just it did mention that the data was compiled with the help of um, OBIS and worms database. A worm stands for World Register of Marine Species. So because of that, the data quality is very important. So a few years ago, this project team was formed. And I inherited this team about two years and three months ago. And we did a series of exercise to, with the sole goal to improve the OBIS data quality. So we launched a user survey in the beginning of the project team. And these are the feedback that we got that's relevant for this project team. That's to improve the documentation of how the data in OBIS is being processed. The second thing is we need um, the user mentioned that there is a need for more effective quality control. There's also the issue of data quality and completeness that's being mentioned. And finally, the training requirements for people to manage, who manage uh, the biodiversity data. So we have the objective, we have the goal that help us to plan. But in order to make progress, we need a system. In the system that we employ for this project team, we call it the I call it the prevent, detect, and respond system. So we need to prevent a data quality issue before it gets into the system. If it gets into the system, we need to do, be able to detect them. And when we detect them, we need to be able to respond to them. But this is a, a cycle, in my opinion. So to detect it, to improve the detection, we or uh, there are several things that we do. The first is the note presentation. We invite different OBIS nodes to come to our monthly meeting to present how they process their data, how they clean their data, what are the challenges that they encounter. And then the other thing that we did is the data laundry event. That's a data cleaning event. We noted that there are many um, data managers. They don't have time to clean the backlog. So in this data laundry event, we make time for them for one week or several days People clean their data, and there are sessions that we organize virtually to discuss the common challenges. So what happened in these two approach that we take is we find solutions for common challenges. So very often, the common challenges often involves around a completeness issue. We don't have this information from our data provider, really the data is like that, what can we do? And then we have the uncertainty part of the challenges. We don't have one single value for individual count, for example, we have a range, we are not sure. And how do we document that? And then in, in order to respond to all the challenges, we also have the monthly meeting where people can propose agenda items to discuss the, the questions that they have. 
And of course, we also have the community engagement channel. We have the Slack channel and GitHub repository where we respond to different issues. And finally, what we discuss in the nerd presentations and data laundry events don't just get lost. We document them, we put them into the OBIS manual as well as um, materials for a training course so that this could educate the data manager who manage the data to improve how to handle and clean the data before the data get published. So good, great news and recently just a couple of days or week ago, uh, OBIS manual has been updated, including all the recommendations and solutions that we have. We believe the challenges that we have is not unique and many people also have them. So we encourage you to have a look at them. If you have any feedback, please contact at OBIS help desk. And then secondly, OBIS also just launched a training course um, to contribute uh, how to contribute data and publish data sets to OBIS um, just last week or two weeks ago as well. So if you have any comments and you would like to have, uh, if you have someone where you could benefit from the training course, please feel free to share this with them. And any feedback is, of course, always welcome. And finally, this is a big chunk of work that we do. Um, it's related to the effective quality control feedback that we received from the user survey. We aligned the OBS data quality checks with the core tasks and assertions developed by the TAT Biodiversity Data Quality Task Group 2. After he is in the room, uh, we map 34 OBIS quality checks to and, and map it to the core test. There are 99 of them. I believe in total we map it to 24 core tests and assertions. We decided on the parameters, how we can parameterize the tests so that it's it fits the marine data. For example, some of the default parameter in the data, in the core test uses the GBIF backbone taxonomy, but in OBIS we use the worms taxonomic backbone, so we can parameterize that. Um, we document all the mapping. Most of them are exact match. If they are different of how OBIS does that, it's documented in this uh, in our wiki and please have a look at them if you have any feedback that would be great thank you and that's con that concludes the system where we have yeah thank you very much if you have any question i'll be happy to answer oh before that i need to acknowledge all the amazing members um, Ruben is my co-chair, he's amazing, um, as well as everyone who participated in the working group. And I really want to thank the TATWIC BDQ task group too. Without their hard work, I, this cannot be done. So thank you, thank you everyone. I only make a comment, in fact, that the data providers into OBIS have highly different levels of skill and uh, this, this sort of training and manual is a quite awesome effort and uh, it does bring the people, new beginners up to, up to scratch quickly. Um, there are questions in the Slack channel for both speakers so far <laughs> from VJ. <laughs> who's also in the room, but, you know, kicking things off asynchronously. So go ahead and make sure you check the Slack channel for this session. Mm -hmm. And there are questions. For, there's a question for both of you. Um, seeing no further. Oh, Arthur. Thank you, Lee Min. And it's great having you on, coming on board with our <laughs> task group and, and, and linking between the 
the, the data quality we're doing and the data quality you're doing. I'm very interested in, in the comment that you had there where you document how OBUS is using that particular test and what differences you make. And we need to make be able to make some GitHub links from one to the other, I think, so that we can uh, keep an eye on, on that. And that might then help others who are trying to implement the data. It's good. That's a very good idea. Thank you, Ava. It's, yeah, I also have the, the question myself because whatever we do right now is a snapshot because I know you all are still working on the tests, uh, but this, this project team is concluded for the moment. But yeah, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead to transition.